This video covers respiratory system medications. We'll focus on medications for asthma and other respiratory disorders. The main function of the respiratory system is to bring oxygen into the body and remove carbon dioxide. This exchange takes place in the alveoli, which are sacs at the end of the respiratory tree. The diaphragm facilitates breathing by contracting and relaxing, which changes the pressure, allowing air to enter and to leave the lungs. Asthma is a common chronic condition where airway obstruction happens intermittently. It's characterized by acute bronchospasm. Common triggers of asthma include pollen, pollen, <laughs> animal dander, and foods. Besides the bronchoconstriction, there's also an inflammatory response that's happening with chemicals like histamine and other chemical mediators. They're stimulated and they cause inflammation. So I think of asthma, A-S-T-H-M-A, as a mnemonic to help remember medications for respiratory disorders. COPD, or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, is characterized by airflow limitation. The main disease causing COPD is chronic bronchitis and emphysema. Bronchitis is inflammation of the bronchi. The mucous membranes of the airway are swollen and they cause the creation of thick mucus that can narrow the airway. With emphysema, the alveoli become less elastic, which can make moving air out of the lungs difficult. We use a variety of medicines for an individual with COPD depending on symptoms. They may need supplemental oxygen for shortness of breath or dyspnea. Most patients receive the same bronchodilators and anti-inflammatory medications that are used to treat asthma. Mucolytics and expectorants may also be used to decrease the thickness of the mucus and then help remove it. A is for adrenergic, specifically beta-2 adrenergic agonists. In review, remember we have three types of sympathetic or adrenergic receptors that respond to adrenaline. Think of that fight or flight response. When stimulated, beta-1 receptors in the heart, they increase the heart rate and strength of contraction. The beta-2 receptors are in the lungs and they open the bronchioles to let more air in. The alpha receptors are in the arteries and they cause the arteries to constrict, which increases the blood pressure. Now, beta-2 adrenergic agonists, they stimulate the beta-2 receptor sites in the lungs, which cause bronchial dilation or they open the airway. These drugs are classified by the action, whether they're short or long acting. Examples of SABA or short acting beta-2 agonists are albuterol or levalbuterol. These have a rapid onset, but short term effect and are all, they're often used for, as a rescue inhaler for someone having an acute asthma attack. So metarol is a LABA or a long acting beta-2 agonist with a slower onset and a duration of at least 12 hours. So metadrol may be taken daily and it's not a rescue inhaler. To remember the side effects, consider that the different adrenergic receptors we reviewed are really similar. So these medications can stimulate some of the other receptors as well. Considering this, does it make sense that fight or flight effect may be seen? Side effects are tachycardia, tremors, nervousness, increased blood pressure, increased blood sugar may be seen. Adverse effects are dysrhythmias. Especially with the excessive use of these inhalers, bronchospasm, which is a paradoxical or opposite effect, can happen. H is for HALT leukotrienes. Leukotriene is one of those chemical mediators of the immune response that's involved in the reactions you might have with asthma or allergies. It causes spasticity and inflammation. Leukotriene inhibitors reduce inflammation and they ease bronchoconstriction. These drugs are used prophylaxis for asthma or to prevent exercise-induced asthma. They are not used for acute asthma attacks. This is not a rescue drug. Side effects, adverse effects are headache, mood changes, suicide thoughts, or actions. For prevention or asthma maintenance, these medications are taken at night to help individuals breathe better at night and wake up breathing better. For exercise-induced asthma, they should be taken two hours prior to exercise. 
S is for steroids or glucocorticoids. Glucocorticoids suppress the immune system, which in turn decrease inflammation. For patients with respiratory problems, taking the inflammation down in the airway, the airway is the desired therapeutic effect. Ideally, these medications should only be taken for a short period of time because of the immune system suppression. As we review this drug class, notice that the generics have a common ending, O-N-E. Glucocorticoids like prednisone can be taken PO, or they can be taken by inhalation to prevent asthma attacks. And fluticasone is a popular inhaler. With inhaled steroids, patients should be taught to increase, to rinse their mouth out after they use these inhalers to prevent thrush, which is a fungal infection in the mouth. For treatment of severe acute asthma attacks or shortness of breath with COPD, methylprednisone can be given in an emergency. It can be given IV. Regardless of how these medications are given, they can have a systemic effect. Side effects for classes of drugs, and for this class of drugs, it includes euphoria. And then I put the S's down, sugar, salt, and sick. So hyperglycemia, hypernatremia, which can cause fluid retention and edema, and sick because individuals can get sick easier and have an increased risk for infection. For adverse effects, I put stop. These drugs need to be tapered down and not stopped abruptly because this could cause Addisonian crisis. Addisonian, remember, is that you need to add some glucocorticoids. It's a low, it's a syndrome of low glucocorticoids. Prolonged use, the glucocorticoids can build up and it can cause Cushing syndrome. The patient is being crushed by glucocorticoids. Now T is for theophylline. It's a methoxanthine. They're also called xanthines, and these medications relax the smooth muscle in the airway and they relieve bronchospasm. They are used most commonly to treat asthma. IV theophylline may be given as continuous infusion in a serious as asthma attack. Oral forms like aminophilin and theophylline. Did you notice the generic ending? L-L-I-N-E. These medications have a narrow safety margin, so patients must take them as directed, and serum drug levels need to be drawn. I think this is kind of interesting. Did you know that caffeine is also a xanthine compound? When the liver breaks down caffeine, one very small byproduct is theophylline. So can we use coffee for asthma? Well, to get the same amount of theophylline as in this medicine, we would overdose on caffeine. But some say it just might help in an emergency if medication isn't available. Side effects of xanthines are nervousness and tremors. Adverse effects are tachycardia and dysrhythmias. Individuals taking theophylline should not also drink a large amount of coffee. Does that make sense? M is for mast cell stabilizers. Mast cell stabilizers, they inhibit the allergy cells called mast cells from bursting open and releasing substances, chemical mediators that cause inflammation. Some of these mediators like leukotrienes or histamine and TNF factor alpha, that's what we're blocking here. By reducing airway inflammation, mast cell stabilizers can prevent asthma attacks, but they don't stop an, an acute attack. Chromalin is the primary mast cell stabilizer. Intranasal chromalin can cause nasal burning and irritation. A is for anticholinergics. Anticholinergics are a bronchodilator and they're used for asthma and COPD. Here we are again, back to the autonomic nervous system. Anticholinergic block actions of acetylcholine. Remember that's the parasympathetic nervous system. Uh, neurotransmitter, which causes bronchospasm. So these medications relieve or prevent bronchospasm and help dry secretions. Examples are ipotropium and tiotropium. These medications, as you notice, the generic ones end in IUM. Considering that they're anticholinergic, it's easy to understand that they could cause dry mouth, dry eyes, and urinary retention. Another respiratory disorder is tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is a very contagious infection that invades the lungs and it's caused by the organism Mycobacterium tuberculosis. 
Drug therapy is different than most other infections. The mycobacterium, the cell wall, is resistant to penetration by anti-infective drugs. For medications to affect this organism, therapy has to be continued for six to 12 months, even if the patient doesn't have symptoms. The second thing to know about these TB drugs is that we're gonna use at least two, sometimes four or, or, or more medications at the same time, including antibiotics, and they may be used in different combinations. This microbacteria, it grows really slow and resistance often happens. Isonitazid is a first line drug. The adverse effect is hepatotoxicity. The patient must be monitored for signs of jaundice and liver enzyme tests are done monthly during therapy. Rifampin is a second common first line drug. Side effects is that that saliva, sweat, tears, urine, and feces may become orange. So that's a consideration. It can stain clothes and soft contact lenses may become permanently discolored. Well, that concludes respiratory system medications for asthma and other respiratory disorders.